Let's take a look at some frequently asked questions. Question number one. My parents are both on medication for high cholesterol. I just assume I will need medication sooner or later too, aka the fault is in my genes. I do have a lot of patients whose parents are both on cholesterol-lowering medications, statins, and they've told their children, my patient, that sooner or later, they're gonna to need to be on a medication because it's in the genes. Now, this might be plausible if we didn't have any knowledge of human history. If there wasn't evidence that heart disease only develops in Western industrialized countries, we could believe that there are just people with bad genes who develop heart disease. But there's no way to account for the recent onset of heart disease in human civilization by pointing to genes. If we had a genetic problem, we would have had to have heart disease for millennia, and it wouldn't just crop up suddenly. So just from a very face validity standpoint, the argument doesn't make any sense. That being said, there are people with a familial genetic defect in how their cholesterol is handled and they have incredibly high LDL cholesterol, it's like over 200, and they have relatives who die of heart disease in their 30s. I'm not talking about the rare genetic conditions that cause people to have heart disease at very young ages. I'm talking about the general population whose LDL cholesterol creeps above 130 as they get older, whose diet and lifestyle factors are all contributing to the problem, who end up on statin medications. That has nothing to do with genetic predisposition and everything to do with diet. So what those patients of mine are inheriting rather than genes are lifestyle factors that predispose them to developing elevations in LDL cholesterol. I'm talking about sedentary lifestyle, red meat. I'm talking about low fiber diets, low in fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, nuts and seeds. Clearly our LDL cholesterol and the development of atherosclerosis is determined by lifestyle factors that come along with Western civilization and clearly those factors can be minimized. So the fault is definitely not in your genes unless you are that rare less than 1% of people with a genetic mutation, in which case your LDL is going to be at least 180 you'll have family members who have died in their 30s and 40s from heart disease. Otherwise, it's you are in the general population and these recommendations are highly relevant to you and medication is not in the cards if you adopt these positive lifestyle changes. Next question is, what about testing for lipoprotein little a? There's a lot of buzz around lipoprotein little a. It's one of the two, two types of LDL cholesterol and possibly one that is more directly related to development of atherosclerosis and heart disease? Well, one answer to that is that I only t do laboratory testing on results that actually have anything to do with reducing all-cause mortality. I look every time a patient comes to me with a question about lipoprotein little a, I do a review of the literature. Still, no population studies have been done assessing whether lipoprotein A has anything to do with your risk of all-cause mortality. So one reason I'm not testing for it is it's, it doesn't meet the criteria for being included in health score. Another reason I'm not testing it for it is because it won't matter what the result is. Let's say you have high LDL cholesterol. Recommendation, limit red meat, increase fiber, decrease sedentary activity, and increase aerobic and strength training. Let's say you have high LDL cholesterol and high lipoprotein A. Recommendation, same as above. Let's say you have low LDL cholesterol and high lipoprotein A. It's not possible to have that situation. Lipoprotein A is a component of LDL cholesterol. So there is not a situation where you can have high lipoprotein A and low LDL cholesterol. What if you have low 
of both. Good job. You're not, you can keep on doing what you're doing. The point I'm trying to make is the LDL cholesterol is necessary and sufficient for determining next steps. Lipoprotein A does not add any help to the picture. The next question I get is what about HDL cholesterol, triglycerides, total cholesterol, LDL to HDL ratio, and so on. My answer to that is I researched all these. These were candidates for being included in health score because HDL cholesterol is purported to be the good cholesterol to help and potentially, so I looked for studies that showed that high HDL reduces mortality, couldn't find them. Triglycerides are another kind of bad cholesterol. They go up when carbohydrates in our diet go up and when we're more sedentary. So I look for studies showing a link between high triglycerides and increased mortality, didn't find it. Same search for studies for total cholesterol, didn't find it. Same research for studies on LDL to HDL ratio, couldn't find it. The bottom line is the only component of a lipid panel that has any bearing on risk of premature death is LDL cholesterol, and that's why it's our focus in health school.